Hey everybody, welcome to another GM Mini where we do our best to give game masters and players something to think on in about five minutes or less, we hope. Anyways, before we even get the timer started, this video is coming with a disclaimer because I know for a fact this one's going to ruffle some feathers and piss off some fans. So before anything, I want to point out this is a thought experiment, this is things to think on, and this is opinion. This is not fact. We're also probably going to go over the five minutes this time because there'll be a lot more explaining. Anyways, we can start the timer now because I'm going to postulate that Dungeons and Dragons 3rd Edition and 3.5, because I count them as the same, was a bad thing for D&D as a hobby. Okay, as I said, it's going to piss off some people, but listen to everything. Not the entire game, but some of the choices they decided to make, I think are the root in a lot of the toxicity we're currently having in the hobby and that we have been having. And with that, we're going to do a little bit of a history lesson as we roll it back, because I think the single biggest problem D&D 3rd Edition did was make a single edition of Dungeons & Dragons. When we think back to the history of D&D, people think back to the time of 2nd Edition AD&D, and they think back to the time of BX. But the fact is, from 1977 all the way up till 1995, both AD&D and the BX, blah, 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 let's add multiple letters, but BX makes it simple. That edition was running concurrently. We were getting support from both of these because these are vastly different styles of play and mentalities to what Dungeons & Dragons is, and both of them running together is what made D&D as popular as it was and what made it special. Now, again, full disclosure, I get why when Hasbro brought it, they went, let's make a single edition. It avoids confusion in the marketplace. They only have to advertise one edition. It makes things a lot easier. But the big problem is AD&D was D&D for the hobby shop enthusiasts, for the former war gamers, for the tacticians. It was the minutia rules heavy driven dungeons and dragons that is what third edition became the evolution of bx while still had a fair amount of rules comparatively it was rules light dnd it was narrative focused dnd it was the dnd for the masses that's where the red box came from this was the dnd that a mom could pick up quite literally in some places in the grocery store for their kid this was the dungeons and dragons that had mass appeal. What Nintendo is to video games or what Band-Aid is to adhesive bandages, this is why D&D is what it is to tabletop gaming, because of BX. AD&D has its fans, BX has its fans. When you go into the OSR, you can see the two diverging types of OSR. But we always seem to forget that these were happening at the exact same time. The reason why it's building toxicity now is that by whittling it down to one type of D&D, you were saying which type was the correct type. And it fostered this. This is what Dungeons & Dragons is moving forward. This is a big reason why there's a lot of people who don't like 5th edition say it doesn't feel like D. First of all, you're fully welcome to not like 5th edition and it's more rules like narrative focused, rulings over rules instead of rules over ruling mentality. The thing is, while 3.x, because it had an update, let's just count it, 3.x. While 3.x was the evolution of AD&D, 5th edition is the evolution of BX. It is just as much rooted in the history of D&D, but it's the other side of the coin. And that side of the coin was basically treated as it didn't exist for, well, like 15, 20 years. It's not too surprising. People are like, well, this isn't D&D. It is. It's a whole side of D&D that wasn't being touched on. This is a big reason why 5th edition is hugely popular, because it's D&D for the masses, not for the hobbyists. And there is a big difference here. Now, they're trying to market to both and adding some things, and they're trying to go for a middle ground, which is causing its own problems. But in the end, the overall design philosophy is on that side of things, which is why it's happening. Now, this isn't the only reason why 3rd edition is kind of the root of the systemic problems we have in the community right now. The other, without mincing words, 
is the design choices Monty Cook brought to third edition, namely trap mechanics, or as he puts it, putting in suboptimal choices so players can feel rewarded for mastering the game and knowing not to take those. I'm sorry, not exactly a hot take, but I think purposely putting bad things into your game so people who know the game better know not to take them is bad design. It just is. It's lazy, kind of stupid, and a way to fill books. But the bigger problem is third edition, and in turn Pathfinder stuff, because it has a lot of the same designs, has correct and incorrect ways to make characters. And this is where we get correct D&D and incorrect D&D. The right way to play, the wrong way to play, because they actually put a wrong way in rather than making a well-designed game that balances. This is also why we have the whole culture of builds and min-max and all that. That was heavily fostered. Again, none of these were new to third edition, but the choices made in third edition accentuated all of them. I'm pretty sure I'm over time, so I'm going to try to wrap it up. But it accentuated all of them, and it kind of cemented it as official stance in many, many ways because it's the route the game decided to showcase itself in how the game was being presented and how the game was designed. I'm not saying there weren't good things from that edition. The OGL, the open game license, was huge for the hobby. But small choices like this that don't seem like a big deal that, again, when you get to look back 20 years in hindsight, we can go, maybe this is a spot where things start to shift and create divides and a bit of toxicity within the community. Anyways, I'm probably gonna actually completely disable comments on this one because I know it's gonna piss people off. But this whole series is about me throwing things out to think on, not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong, things to think about that you probably haven't. Or anyways, I'll catch you guys next week. Bye.